Hi uh, guys, welcome back. Um, I know you don't like this part, but I was looking at closely some other um, Christian uh, heavy metal uh, covers, album covers. Uh, and, you know, I really can't get over how evil these really look. They really are. And, like I said, I wouldn't even know that these were Christian just by looking at them um, at the first time. This uh, is an album uh, called Becoming the uh, Ar Archetype, and this is a Christian metal band. I know that because I've looked these up very carefully, so I know that they are. Uh, the title of this one is uh, Necrotizing uh fasciitis now i just got through doing a video a while back not too f long about was that about a week ago probably a little less than a week ago uh it was in the uh, game cards that i did and well anyway it, it's not really important the only thing is is that the name of it actually it comes from a uh, common name for, for a, a flesh-eating bacteria. So that's very interesting, but I just wonder why that this really means anything uh, about, you know, anything Christian at all. You know what I mean? And this one is uh, of a skull, uh, a bearded skull. And it just looks, it doesn't look very Christian to me. It looks to me, it just looks very evil. Here's another one called Tourniquet. Now this is also a Christian, uh, I don't know if I put the emphasis on Christian, uh, heavy metal band. Um, Actually, this logo is occultic. Uh, I mean, the appearance of it and the imagery on this is really way out there. Uh, it's sinister looking. It looks like reptilian, like a demon. Demon. Uh, kind of has like these mechanisms on its eyes, like it's like robotic. Uh, what does all this really have to do with the Christian? I mean, the title of it is Microscopy View of a Telescopic Realm. Um, I, I really don't know, you guys. This stuff is really way out there. Uh, to me, it is. Like I said, you know, if I was looking through a I mean, music store, um, uh, I mean, it would really surprise me to, I mean, to find this in a, the Christian genre. It really would. Now, this album, you know, I want to talk about the name a little bit. Now, we all know, heard of Narnia, like the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, I know a couple, three movies have been out so far uh, about the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Well, if you haven't done study on C.S. Lewis and why he wrote these books or anything about the life of C.S. Lewis, um, he was a member of the Golden Dawn. And it was um, told by someone that was uh, in the business of the Illuminati, say. And, and they were you know, in, into the occult, and they said it, that C.S. Lewis books on Narnia uh, was required reading by witches before they were indoctrinated in becoming witches. Okay, and so this name Narnia, um, the meaning of it um, has, has to do with the occult. So, uh, just to let you guys know, and the 
the title of the album is interesting, The Great Fall. Um, is very interesting as well. Uh, I mean, this could be prophetic as, you know, taking the great fall of the end time church. Um, it, yeah, it all looks, I don't know, I, I would just, this, some of these really floor me, it really does. Uh, actually, I did find something with some of the background of, uh, why C.S. Lewis wrote the books in the first place. Uh, it is full of the, of the occult. And uh, in them, he went to great lengths to glorify and even promote many occultic ideas. And some of them maintain the spiritual idea behind the fantasy is the truth of scripture. The hot, cold, hard facts that, completes, that is completely opposite the direction of uh, what people thought that um, it pertained to the Bible, the scriptures, and it didn't. He was introducing children to witchcraft through esoteric and meeting writings. So you guys, I'm telling you that a lot of these uh, albums are leading you into an opposite direction. Um, believe it or not, um, I'm just warning you, okay? And, uh, uh, it also goes on to say that Lewis and his good friends Charles Williams and J.R.R. Uh, Tolkien's, who was author of even another occultic work, The Lord of the Rings Trilogy, and these were nothing, uh, those books were nothing more about Satan and Satanism. Uh, all three were a part of a group uh, a writers called the Inklings. I don't know if you heard of them. You can look that up if you like. And uh, these are groups that one fr friend felt that Williams and maybe Tolkien were two that influenced Lewis thinking the most. Uh, Williams was also a pro professing Christian and uh, he taught uh, Lewis the white witchcraft delusion of being able to take someone's pain for them and suffer it in one's own body. They cast this talent in a Christian light and Lewis later claimed to have this ability to have it used on behalf of his wife where it says in the Bible there shall not suffer a witch to live and that yeah, in, in Ephesians 4.27 says, Neither give place to the devil. Uh, so, need I go on from here? Um, so, I just wanted to show you you guys this. That I was just really wasn't making this up. And it goes on to say about Charles Williams was also a mem member of the highly devilish Cabal, uh, Kabbalistic Order of the Golden Dawn was an active member for several years. And this Order of the Golden Dawn was made up of mystical Christians and former followers of Madame Blavatsky that still adhered to Luciferianism. So you see, it's deeply seated, rooted in the occult and Satanism. Um, I'll leave a link to this article. You can read it for yourself. Okay, this is the uh, album cover that a commenter had uh, told me to look up uh, in regards to the, the uh, well, basically an album cover and some of the songs. Well, when I did, I, went, I did some further research on this group. And I'll show you here in a second. Okay. Meet Haste the Day's uh, cover of uh, off the attack of the Wolf King. Now the Wolf King, this has to do with Satan. And the title of the song is Meet Me Halfway. Okay. Now this was a song. And the person who did this video said... This was a um, song done by the Black Eyed Peas. 
okay okay and here we go the black eyed peas meet me halfway video now you guys tell me why is a christian metal band haste in the day singing a black eyed peas song meet me halfway which is totally if you've seen this video uh... is very way out there to do with she looks like she's in the Garden of Eden which is the beginning of the fall uh, fall of mankind into sin and this is really full of uh, New World Order symbolism occultic symbolism and my question is is that hasten the day where I from what I heard is crossing over and in, into other music besides so-called Christian you, you understand what I'm saying so the point that I'm trying to get here is that there's no way that any Christian band that uh, that titles themselves man, metal rock can actually survive without having to cross over into other music. I mean, it can't work, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. I can show you album after album, song after song, what I found, and it's just not working. I mean, uh, look at this. I mean, what does this really have to do with Jesus and praising God? It doesn't. This this song is really as far worldly, worldly as you can get. You know? I don't know, you guys. I don't know what else to say. Okay, and one more. Now, this is Striper. They've been around for quite a while. And they're a... Uh, Christian, so-called Christian, if you can call them that. Uh, I'm not sure if they're metal or rock. Uh, but my point is, is that their logo here, which is a triangle, which is a New World Order symbol, okay, right off there, if you're familiar with that. Uh, I mean, if you can look on the dollar bill there on our dollar bill I mean it's new, all new world order and the title of this is to hell with the devil now is this basically saying you know it's gonna you're gonna go to hell with the devil for listening to striper uh, and look at the the yellow and black these are uh, definitely colors uh, occultic colors and uh, just think of uh, the thousands upon thousands of uh, people that they're misleading with their music um, and uh, to even say uh, what I, well, what I found another one on uh, Striper is this one. Now, this is, I don't know, I, I mean, this is just really disgusting. Very disgusting. Like I said, if I've seen any of these albums, I, d I just wouldn't know that they were Christian at all. To me, they would just be something, um, a secular rock band. And... So I'm running out of time. So that's it for now. Uh, take care. Until next time. God bless you guys. Love you. Bye.